Hey everyone, here's another quick update video to just let you guys see what we've been working on most recently with this retro pixel art style game we're making with Construct 2. And with me as always is Corey. Say hi Corey. Hey, how's it going? All right, so there are still several videos worth of footage that I have not yet had the chance to edit and put online. And I believe in what will be one of those videos of a creative scrum that Corey had. We discussed in more detail. We figured out how we were going to handle the different gauntlet-based magical powers for each level. And I also mentioned the desire to add a couple of new moves to the character himself. And those will be, they will be there by default when you don't have the powered up gauntlet, but then they might be different to some degree depending on which power you have in any given level. So I wanted to show that I worked that into the game and I did really rough, crappy placeholder art to get it working and then Corey did a great job cleaning it up so I will show those two new moves to you. Grab my controller. So here we have the characters always. He has the air, ba air bash attack but now that is mapped to holding up and pressing attack instead of down because now when you press down an attack the character with no gauntlet power will do this drop kick. And then the other thing is while you are on the ground, if you hold down and press attack, you'll do a cool aerial uppercut attack. And again, these moves might vary depending on what level you win and what power up you get uh, that's special to that particular level. And so I added that and you can see I can drop kick the birds, I can still air bash them. And this works in every level, except I didn't bother programming in the kind of um, specific code to levels where actually I should have come to think of it. Because in every level you don't necessarily, let, like you start off always without having the power. So I should, but that doesn't take long. I'll program it into all of them, but I have it working already in levels one and three, three being the... Uh, swamp level. Oops. And, and that's me getting killed there. It's my beautiful you lose cinematic. But the other things I wanted to show off are, are in level 3. So let me close that out actually and go to level 3. And that is the extra sort of behavior involved with the frog enemy. So I can drop kick him too or I can uppercut him. And uh, Air bash. So let's get to one of the frogs. There's a frog, so the, you can still hit him the normal way like that. You could drop kick him. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> that that's a bug. He shouldn't have gone sliding perfectly horizontally off the screen. Let's see if I can earn a heart before I die here. There we go. All right. Let's see another frog. Let's see if this will work properly this time. All right. So there he is. I could drop kick him like that, or uh, I'm trying to drop kick him while he's oops, gonna get killed in a second. Yep. All right. Let's try that again. <laughs> you suck at this game. Yeah, that is true. All right. Uh, let's see here. All right, come on. There. Oh. <laughs> Wow, he ricocheted in a way I would not have expected. So apparently there's still some bugs with that, but the cool thing is if the frog is in his jump where he's in his armored spike ball mode and you air bash him or, there we go, he actually ricochets off of the ground making it more likely that he'll hit into other enemies. But So I made it work, but I haven't tweaked it yet. So let's see if I can drop kick him out of the... Ah, it's so hard with all these other enemies. Yeah, there's too many enemies. I haven't uh, properly spaced out the enemies for a fun gameplay yet, just to sort of test everything. So one more try. Just get try to get only the frog on screen. That would be nice. Get out of my way. <laughs> there we go. So as you can see, the air bash or the drop kick while he's balled up like that can send him flying the other way. I, yeah. noticed, I noticed that when he goes flying off the screen, yep. there's like some sort of delayed um, rumble. Like, uh, oh, like a, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like yeah. hitting the ground way out there somewhere oh, yes, or something. Yes, that is the case. And I think I just showed the bug that I mentioned uh, to you, Corey, earlier. 
is every once in a while when I drew the dropkick, I swear the player is hitting an invisible enemy off screen that, like an enemy that you can't see but that you can hit. I have no idea what could be causing that, but I'll get if I if that's an actual bug and I'm not hallucinating, I will uh, eventually figure out the cause. Uh, but anyway, those are the new moves, and the other thing that uh, we discussed that I'm almost certainly going to do is, yep, yeah, there it was. Yeah, it was so weird. Oh, yeah, so I'm causing all kinds of bugs now. Um, wow. But yeah, I'll get to the bottom of it. It's uh, just yeah. have to clean up some things. I added a bunch of stuff kind of uh, uh, hastily, and so now I have to go back in and clean things up and make sure I take care of such edge cases as that stuck fish man down there um oh that's why he's one of the ones that spawn and we after we fix that thing we never turned back on those events that specifically let the fish man come back up on the like actually jump on the screen oh, right um, yeah because we were pretty sure we were that's the case gear out uh there we go y velocity so it is yep right here right so that fixes that bug. There were still a couple of other bugs we spotted with bounce, bouncing the toad, but that's uh, pretty straightforward stuff. But anyway, I should, me should mention to everyone, I was dealing with, luckily, Corey helped me figure out the problem. Or I should say, Corey figured out the problem while I uh, groped around in, in del delirium and madness trying to figure it out. He <laughs> spotted the actual cause after like two hours of me uh, going nuts trying to figure it out. but. Uh, this is a good le lesson for all programmers and especially eventers in Construct. It is extremely handy to have families where you can put different objects like sprites or spider objects into a family and then write sort of universal events that affect everything in that family the same way. The problem is you have to be really careful, and I left the spriter file open to show this. When Corey originally made this, there was no need for a fall animation. Right? So he was otherwise identical in animation names with the other humanoid enemies. And we have a family group called uh, Humanoid Enemies. And I did some specific events, not for each type of humanoid enemy, but that affects. Let's see. Why? Sorry again. Why? I've got to turn down those windows. Oh, window sounds. Uh, y velocity. Okay. So right here, this is affecting the humanoids, and this is the event that makes the enemies have gravity. So when you set their y velocity to a negative number, they fly up. And then this one event, it just applies gravity to them and makes them start to fall back down and build momentum up to a maximum speed of downward velocity. The problem was that there was another event that required or checked for the animation fall. So you could see it here on animation. So it's 69. Clear search. Let's see if we could find it here. 69. So on hit finished, uh, mm -hmm. we do all these things. And then you could see one of the things we do is we, if he's on the ground or below it, then we set his animation to walk. And if he if he's still up in the air, we change his animation to fall. But he had no animation fall, the fish man specifically. So I was going nuts trying to figure out why is this code working perfectly for the bird men in level one. But uh, the fish man, after he jumped up, he was gliding down super slowly. And I just yeah, couldn't figure it out. An, yeah, we had an extra variable there that was setting the y velocity to one e right. even though it, it really wasn't necessary to have it to begin right. with which is why it's gone now, right that's another issue yeah 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 and uh, but that was yeah that was the cause of the slow downward glide and mm -hmm. uh but the the other big issue was that animation set animation to fall it couldn't so every loop it's still considered animation f to hit to have just finished because apparently in the spider objects if we you have an on animation finished trigger and then you try to set it to an animation that doesn't exist it stays at the very very end split nanosecond of that animation that is no longer playing but it's at the end of it so when it, it when it loops again 
Ed actually considers the animation to have just finished again. And that was causing an infinite loop that was constantly triggering, oh, hit animation hit is finished because it couldn't switch to fall because there was no fall. So it kept setting the Y velocity to one. So, but anyway, thank Corey or thank, thank goodness, thank Corey that, uh, that he was able to spot the, uh, the problem. Well, yeah, yeah. And the thing was, is I didn't even realize that it didn't have a fall animation. Right. It was just, I noticed that set velocity to one and that's what, right. what made me think, hmm, that's, you know, like, right. that seemed, like that looks a little weird. But then we discovered, yeah, that there right. was no fall and so, like, that was the root cause. Right. You know? I had done some smart things while I was trying to figure out the code. I have a uh, text object that is available for any of the layouts. Let me show you in level three. Usually I put it off screen so that it's not annoying to look at. But whenever I have a weird bug going on, I can drag it on screen and then I can have an event specific to that layout that every tick sets the text to whatever variables I think might be throwing weird values that are causing bugs mm -hmm. uh, and so in this case it was the max velocity the y velocity and the name of the animation and that did help us start eliminating potential causes and we saw that the y velocity kept resetting to one so when Corey saw that number set y velocity to one he said hey that's probably the issue and that that was indeed that helped us zero in not only did we get rid of that set y velocity to one uh, but we also realized that that's when uh cory realized oh does the you know it basically said oh does the fishman have a fall animation and sure enough it did not so we just updated the spider file to have a fall animation and then the other thing we did aside from cory cleaning up my really bad placeholder art of the uppercut sequence and the drop kick we added this hard land animation which is just the idle for now but for a slightly shorter period of time and not looping so basically if you do your drop kick move and you miss let me see if here if you do your drop kick move and you miss the uh, miss an enemy so you're not bouncing off of a relatively soft thing then you hit the ground and then we made the camera shake a little bit and we made an impact flash that was another thing that Corey added graphically so that's the new stuff. We've got, uh, we remapped the way you do the uh, smasher with up and attack instead of down and attack. Down and attack now does the drop kick. And down and attack while on the ground does the uppercut. Uh, and that's it for now. The next thing we're going to do is, like, like I said, we figured out the different behaviors and relative themes and looks for the magic for each level. So this first level has the flame based magic, like flame slash explosive based magic. So that's the first one we're gonna get done. And then we're just going to uh, continue for each level. And uh, we will obviously keep you updated as we do that. Uh, were there any other thoughts you had or? Um... Uh, no, I, I think yeah. that covers it. Yep. And then after we get all the magic done, the really exciting uh, next step will be starting to get into boss fights. Uh, so right. that'll be really cool stuff. Uh, but anyway, we will keep you guys updated as always. And thanks very much for watching.